Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to AZF Arena for today's contest between Nadick and your Brockton Boxers. At this time, we'd like both teams to line up at the blue line for the playing of our national anthem. And here we are at AZF Arena. You are looking down at AZF Rink where your Brockton Broxers are finishing out the season strong, taking on the Natick Red Hawks from the Bay State League. We'll be uh, hearing from Kevin K. Rowe a little bit later on, hopefully. Uh, he, the athletic director for Brockton High School. Very busy because there is not just basketball, there's not just hockey, there's all sorts of other fun sports that Brockton High School Athletics are participating in. So we start the game. El Shammy, I've gotten that name right. Uh, this has probably been my fifth announcement, an announcing of a game, and I finally got it right. El Shammy. So if you learn nothing else today, number four in your program booklet is Nathan El Shammy. Speaking of hard-nosed players, that is Mr. Bridges. And back at it is Ben Martin trying to retrieve the puck, get it out. Peyton Sylvia clears the puck. As the puck is down at the Natick end of ice, Martin back to retrieve and try to get it back in. No such luck. Dante Masario trying to clear it out, kept in by Natick. We'll get familiar with these names as we go along. Where is it? Where did that puck land? Ah, high in the sky under the net. That's where that puck landed, outside the Brockton zone. Taking the face off, Kato Kalano. Goes down to Natick end of ice. Uh, Kevin, we will not be able to hear each other, so I will listen closely to your every word through these headphones. <laughs> so uh, the season, uh, very competitive season overall, Kevin. Yeah, we've been competitive. Um, Maybe the scores didn't result in, in no, the amount it, of victories it, you honestly, want. Honestly, it, it comes down to the third period, and I think what's happened is um, just we don't have the depth that we used to. And the same kids are out there, and... Um, you just don't have a lot of flexibility with changing up your lines and getting some kids some breaks, so they'll keep it close, but then 
fatigue sets in in the third yeah. period, and it's tough to go up and down the ice for a good 45 minutes, and that's been the unfortunate thing for us this season. Yeah, this season, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. The third period, they tie it out. I mean, yeah. Pey Peyton Sylvia's, I don't know what they call it, but it's not double shifting. Um, I mean, he's out there most of the game. He's out there at least 45 minutes. Yeah. And, yeah, there's a number of players just like him. El Shami. Yeah, there's uh, some Jaylen guys Bridges. that you'll see out on the ice the majority of the game. Yeah. And um, for as good a shape they're in, I mean, it's you get banged around a little bit and it takes its toll, and that's really third period is really where we've struggled. And as you said, the depth the depth from the other team wears them down. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, take a look at how many kids are on that Natick bench right now. Yeah. Yeah, they get a full bench. Right. And we've noticed that uh, Ryan Spano is taking, uh, yep, taking Ryan, some games in that. He's playing pretty well. He's played very well. And that's good for, you know, for the next couple of years because he's only a sophomore. Right. So get him some action. And, you know, we've got uh, another goalie, Nathan Petty, who's a junior, who will be competing for that starting job next year as well. Now, does he have a different style? He's a much taller player. He's much taller for sure. Uh, and we've been getting them some work, I know, at the at the JV level and in practice. So, you know, Chris just puts out who he thinks has the best chance to win every day. So, I guess it looks like Ryan's been getting the edge come practice time and, and, um, and in the games here. Yeah, he must have showed something in practice because I forget what the game was, but he, he, he came in at 4-0 and uh, Dominic Massaro was in net. And, you know, a couple of tough shots went in. and So they brought him in there, and, yeah, he's played the games that we've seen and when we've covered, he's played very, very well. And uh, that is exciting that he's only a sophomore. And I know that Chris will have him in the weight room just to get him. He, Ryan's going to have to be a little stronger. He's got to bulk up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, Chris is really good about working with the kids. Now, do you have a type of weight trainer over at the high school? or What's that? Do you have anybody that focuses specifically on weight training well, within the, the athletic the department? Well, the plan is, um, you know, it's in the preliminary stages, but we're taking a look to add a strength and conditioning coach to our coaching staff. Oh, okay. And that would be a position, you know, just, just like a regular coaching position. And uh, they would primarily be there every day after school for whoever wants to work out and that would be a big help for us. Mm -hmm. So that's something you get to push we've got, for in we, the budget. We've got to find, oh boy, that was a rocket. Yeah, that was a laser beam. Um, as we back to the game, we're already under 10 minutes left in the first period. Uh, play has been fairly even, a little more on the Brockton end of things, but defense is holding strong through this first. One of the other things, Kevin, that they've struggled with is it's some games, it's just uh, it, the, the puck is almost a hot potato. They get it on their stick, and they yep. can't get rid of it quick enough. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, you know, just a little things like that, they improve upon going forward and into next year, they'll be in pretty good shape. They really haven't been run out of the building no, I mean, uh, too been, much at all this year. There's been all. a couple of games that I think that, uh, I forget who we played, it was 8-1. to one. Eight to the, one, the, okay. Yeah, yeah. but that's right. going against some teams that are going to be in the Super Eight, I'm sure. Yeah, that's good. Or competing good. for a Division One title. Who are the Who are the teams in D one right now that look tough? I know it's that same um, cast of characters. Not the same cast of characters. I know that Framingham's really good. Uh, Natick is the Bay State usually is really good for hockey. Yeah. They yeah. really are. I was talking to the AD down in Natick, and they have 85 kids in their hockey program at the high school. Wow, so they have a freshman team. They've got, they've got two, I think, three levels of JV and a varsity team. Oh, <laughs> three levels of JV? Yeah. That, that is having your act together. My goodness. Any, uh, any reshuffling, you think, from, uh, for divisions, specifically with the big three? Well, or? I mean, we, there's... There's discussion about um, Bridgewater Raynham and Dartmouth officially adjoining the big three. Uh, we just have to kind of finalize some things. We have a, another AD's meeting um, 
in March. So we just need to kind of take a take a big look of how that's going to impact all of our sports. Um, yeah. Just to make sure that we can uh, compete and there's not going to be any lopsidedness and mm -hmm. making sure that just we have sports that are comparable in all the schools. Yeah, that makes sense. All the sports. Yeah. Yeah, just not the big boys. So how would that work? So you'd go to the MIA, sit nope, down? No, we just um, agree. I mean, our principals would have to agree to it from the from the three schools and uh, the superintendent would have to give the okay and then we just let the MIAA know that we're going to merge and go from there. All right, and then they figure it out from there. So All I'm right. hopefully, I'm hoping that by the end of March we'll have a definitive where, what direction we're going. Okay. What other sports did it impact? I mean, as far as... Uh, well, I mean, the, bi the big one obviously is football. I mean, that and that's really where we're trying to wrap our heads around what to do because uh, we play Bridgewater Arena on Thanksgiving Day. Durfee plays New Bedford on Thanksgiving Day. And that's after the playoffs have already begun. So how do you right. have... How do you pull it off? How do you have a league winner if two of the games haven't been played? Mm. Mm. So... Oh, Spano stuck with that one. Yeah, you know, with soccer, I think it would be fine. Boys and girls soccer, basketball, it's just... Football work gets tricky because of that last game of the season, and I really don't think that the other schools want to play each other twice. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Um, I don't know. It would be nice to have a couple more teams in the, in the big oh, three, it, though. It would, it would be great. Yeah. It really would. And, uh, I mean, we usually play Dartmouth and Bridgewater Raynham in just about everything, mm -hmm. so it really wouldn't be that much of a difference. It's just – right figuring out that football thing because that's that's really important yeah who does Dartmouth play Dartmouth um, they and the other thing with Dartmouth is they're two divisions lower than we are in football oh I see okay oh. so Dartmouth wasn't part of that social renaissance in football the past several years okay or maybe they were in their division they, yeah they were in their division they were I think that they won the Super Bowl Nice save by Spano. Division. That's right. Oh, well, well that would be a nice addition. Yeah. Well, it impacted it, 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 your hockey season got impacted because of uh, uh, the New Bedford team not. New Bedford doesn't not being have able a team. To field so the, team. Yeah. You know, the MIAA gave us, um, they grandfathered us in last year. So if we beat Durfee twice. They gave us the league championship, but they said it could be only for one year. So that's why we didn't have the automatic bid. Okay. All right. Because you technically need to have three teams in a league to win the league. And yeah. Since it was just the two of us. So if you finished at 500. If you finished at 500 and had enough points, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. We're here with athletic director Kevin Cairo. There's just under six minutes left in the first period. Brockton hanging tough with a very strong Natick team from the Bay State League. Herget or Carey, I will have to check for you. Uh, that happens. That big change happened. My goodness, it could be it could be going on 20 years now, uh, where the old Colony League was a strong participant in this part. Um, you had. Natick was never part of it. They were always part of the Bay State, but Weymouth was an old Colony League member that ended up moving on. That was that big reshuffle they did, uh, God knows how many years ago now. But and it match. I think it matched up favorably with uh, teams within a reasonable distance from each right. other. In which and, they weren't traveling 45 minutes to an hour to get right. the games. Which on a bus, and oh, if you think about it, is brutal. It's no fun. Yeah, I, as a kid, you just want to get there. 15 minutes seems like yep. five hours. And uh, you like the? Uh, do you like the playoff, uh, the football playoff format? Oh God, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I you know, I mean, it <laughs> seems like there's two camps. You know, there's, there really seems like there's two camps. And there's a nice save by Spano. He's been tested a little bit this period, um, and he's passed every test. We are under five minutes left in the first period. I'll tell you, 
the boxes have the hop in this stuff today, and you never know. You just never know when you're on vacation. Um, we're all human, and uh, these are students that go, go, go nonstop. They have academics, and then they have their hockey commitment. Yeah. So, you know, are they going to come out shop? Did they get out of bed early enough? Did they eat right? Well, they definitely got their sleep in. There's no question about that. <laughs> so rest was not a problem. <laughs> I would say the average wake-up time on the team was probably 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, not too bad. Not too bad for a 2.30 tilt. Yeah. <laughs> I was reading on the internet, so it must have been true, that they're <laughs> saying teenagers require a minimum of 10 hours of sleep, oh, yeah. but ideally 12 hours of sleep. I, I am a firm believer in that. When I was a principal of uh, the middle school, you know, I was a big advocate to start the uh, school day later. And uh, you know, we went from a 7.30 start to an 8 o'clock start. And, it, it that, that just that little bit of a difference. Mm. Do you miss it? Being principal? Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. See, you, not, get the, you, get the honest, you get the honest answers from A.D. Cairo. <laughs> do I miss the kids? <laughs> I do miss the kids. Yeah. But I get to see them up here. Um, yeah, right? Which is great. They're funneling in now. Yeah. yeah. So I can't believe I'm asking this. What do you teach over there? What do you teach? I don't. I don't. <laughs> All right. So you're a full-time athletic full -time director. Full-time athletic director. And so it's you and it's the me, legend, Janet Diver. It, my secretary, Janet. Yeah. And I've got my trusty assistant. Yes. Who's, who's retiring at the end of this season. So. And we've it, seen her at several games. Yeah, Ethel. Yeah, Ethel Savas has been, you know, extremely helpful. Mm. And we're going to miss her. And we have to find somebody to fill her shoes come come the fall and well, the winter. Well, you know, you, you can always go back to the well. It seems like it seems like uh, uh, the old, not Peter Caruso or Bill Devin, prior to him. Tom uh, Kenny. Tom Kenny, yeah. He's at every game, <laughs> so you might as well just say, hey, man. He is. You want to make a few extra bucks? Come on, Tom, help me out here. Actually, they've, they've all seemed like they've hung around. You know, they, Peter, I know, they, you know, no, he's got his they, They're very in. involved yeah. between uh, the Hall of Fame committee and the Save Our Sports committee mm -hmm. that does so many great things for us. Yeah, so it, it's it's nice that uh, they're around to talk to and get advice and, you know, share stories. Oh, great saves. Oh, Spano wow. is playing out of his mind tonight. Wow. Coach I mean, Cunningham making the right decision. Another save. Oh, get he is stick. getting just blistered with shots here. They're going to have to clear the Nadek. puck. Oh, tipped wide <laughs> by Spano. He got to get a skate on that one. Wow. And he covers this one up. Oh, it's the Spano show. Wow. Welcome to the home of Ryan Spano. You are staring at the net that he now occupies. He'll change sides, yes, like everybody else. But the way he's going today, it doesn't matter where he is. He's going to make the stop. Big two minutes here. That's El Shammy with the puck. Throw to Jalen Bridges. Ooh, little action up front. Oh! I don't know what happened there. He couldn't get the stick down in time. Oh! Was that O'Connell? No, it was not. Oh. That was Ben Martin. Just couldn't get the stick down. Oh, Shot on net. Right. Jalen Bridges. Hello, folks. We got a game here with 113 left in the first. Mm -hmm. No score. Man, Nadek has some big boys. The captain is a mile. Yeah. He's about seven feet tall on skates. And this Natick team lost to Framingham for zip. So Framingham looks like one of the studs this year. Yeah. Hey, just talking to, to my friend Timmy out in Natick, they said that they had 
uh, 11, 1,100 people at the Natick Framingham hockey game. <laughs> and I said, I said 1,100? Uh, he's like, yeah, we were, we were jamming. Oh he my said God. it was a great atmosphere, and, but he just said Framingham was just that good. Wow. Was it in Natick? Uh oh. Oh, loose puck. Uh oh. A barrage. Sylvia gets and, to and it. And this is, this is where they have to be careful not to give up this late, this very late goal in the period, and it's happened so many times. It has, it has, and we you have know, an icing. It's just 30 seconds, 20, and you think you survived the period, and then yeah. boom. Yeah, this is a this is a big face-off. It face just off. kind of sucks the momentum out of you, so they just need to hang on here for 20 seconds, go catch their breath, get their legs under them, and come out again. Face-off one by Natick, blocked. Oh. oh, get that puck out, no dice. Good defense. That's it, Peyton Sylvia, nice job. El Shammy does not get it out. Oh, A race boy. against the clock. And all right. Brockton That's gonna, all right. comes out of the first period with no score. Nothing, nothing. Excellent period by the Brockton Boxers. They go into the first intermission 0-0. Zero, zero. Kevin, will you be joining us for the second period? I'm the whole game. You uh, stuck with me. It's music to my ears. <laughs> On that note, s please stand by for second period af action right after this important message. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. And here we go, second period of action. About to begin, the Brockton Boxers, your very own Brockton Boxers team is in a dogfight, one period through, a no score. Kevin Cairo was kind enough, athletic director of Brockton High School Athletics. Kevin Cairo was kind enough to join us in the first period. Should be back for some more action soon. Natick, who we will also call the Red Hawks, come from the Strong Bay State Carry League, uh, talking with Kevin during the first period. Uh, they battled one of the best teams in the state, Framingham, tooth and nail. They ended up falling 4 nothing, which is no knock on Natick. Uh, it's just the power of Framingham. And there's Jalen Bridges on the run. Oh, and no penalty called. Okay, I'm not one to call out the refs, but get away with that one. Pure and simple. That was a hook, folks. But no call on the ice, so we move on. So the face-off will be to the right of Connor McGill, Natick goaltender. His counterpart on the other side who just made another save, Ryan Spano was well on his way to 50, state, 50 saves today. Postman Mike Simmons on camera as always predicted it, and I think it's a safe bet because we had close to... It seemed like we had close to 20 shots at the first period, if not more. Don't keep the official stat, but we're going to say 20 in the first period, 20. And we'll see what goes from there. As Natick gains control of the puck in the Brockton end. Shot on net, a nice shot. Jalen Bridges, who's had a fine season. Bridges is center, but you'll also see him in a couple of different spots. Cunningham likes to mix and match his, his players. Uh, they don't have great depth, as Kevin attested to earlier. Uh, they're rolling 
two and a half lines out, it seems, if that. But they make do, and they are on the ice. El Shami getting physical along the boards. And the puck is loose. And there's that end of the ice again. That is, we're going to call that tripping alley. That's where people trip. Fall the ice. And we were rejoined by Kevin Cairo, athletic director over at Brockton High School. Long time no see. It's been a while. You're a smart man. You get a, a cup of coffee I during did. the intermission that's actually hot. Yeah, yeah, I give that about five minutes in this rink before <laughs> it's um, cold brew. <laughs> oh. As we discuss the finer points of coffee, the and Red just, Hawks and bring just home like a goal. That, it's one nothing. Just like that. Less than just a little more than three minutes into the period. We'll get the official confirmation on the goal and the helpers if there were any. Yeah, Kevin, that, you know, the, the puck to nowhere, the hot potato. Yeah, and then, you know, Ryan played so great that first period and just... Puck took a funny bounce on him, and just like that, no. it's one zip. Ricky, the goal with by Ricky Mingalili, assisted by Corey Meehan. Uh, Mingalili, we're gonna go with that. And it was a nice goal. Let's see how the boxers respond. This is always, throughout this season, this has been a struggle. Can they get that one Can right back? Can they get it back? And that's going to be important, how they respond. Natick showing a little bit more hop in this step, but a nice steal by Bridges. Oh, turned right back over. Tell you, solid defense out front to this point. Let's see if they can do and something with this. A, they've been doing a – oh, just oh, a little too far right out Right off a of Martin front. stick. A little too far out. Martin has been, has been everywhere. Martin has been doing a job blocking shots and just – Getting in the way of shots. Yeah, Ben Martin's been a solid all-around player this year. This is a blazer. Yeah, they definitely have some guys who yeah, can tee it up for sure. Another block. They go into the puck, which is nice to see. They're much more aggressive this game. And the an nice. All right, we needed a line change and they got it. Let's see who we got here. We got Massaro likely taking the face off. And he's out there with his line mates. We have Shea Sheehan out there as well. Oh, 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 hang and on to Pete. it. Uh-oh, stop and it. And Peter no Sylvia. No stupid penalties. That's the thing that killed them last game. Yeah. I mean, they picked up a couple. I mean, just oh, they were brutal. undisciplined yep. penalties. They let their motion get the better of them, and yeah. that ended up being the difference. Yeah, it sure <laughs> did. As Masaro takes it. Takes it up the oh. left. Oh, and he's stymied. Ouch, I felt that over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got it again. Palermo in the board and digging deep. Palermo is certainly not afraid to mix it up this day or any other day. That's Birmingham chasing the puck. Picked up by Shea Machine. Has control and... Is a delayed offside. Oh. And we play on.
That's something I've seen a lot this year is the referees are not blowing the whistle. When the goalie catches the puck and there's nobody around, they want him to put it down and want play. Yeah. Uh, I have to be honest, I don't necessarily agree with it. If, uh, you know, if you need a stoppage of play, you have control of the puck, then Absolutely. that should be your... Absolutely, yeah. You know what? I had noticed that. Um, yeah, I've noticed it you know, when I go to see my niece play over at Hingham. She's on the Hingham girls team, and it's happened quite a few times where the refs are saying, you know, put it down, keep play going, and I don't yeah, know if that's know. something that's new. Uh, yeah, I hadn't seen it in the past. You know what? I, now that you mention it, we've seen it a handful of times during these games where it's like, pick it up, pick it up. But, yeah, you're right. Once you have control of the puck, yeah. I mean, you might need a line change. It's not like the old days where you used to get the puck tied up in the corner and, you know, they would almost right. blow the whistle immediately for right. a face-off. And I oh. get that they want to keep play moving, but if the goalie has control, I just think that it should be face-off yeah, regardless. Discretion. Yeah, you're right. We get Ryan Flannery, number six, out on the ice. And there's Kate O'Connell trying to get it out. Just having a difficult time getting it out of the zone. And oh. Oh, they'll take it in time for a line change. Timing couldn't be better. We're approaching oh, eight boy. minutes Come left on. in the first period. Turnover, they kept it in. One nothing Natick. I'll catch a break here. Uh, just amazing to see how many teams just keep in and out of this rink all day. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you got a number of and games today, right? Just nonstop. It's, it's unbelievable. So the uh, the company that runs it is FMC? FMC. Okay. F out of Pembroke. And what, what are your dealings with them as the AD? Well, I mean, we pay for the frozen water out here. <laughs> And, um, no, they're really good. I mean, they give us preferential um, practice time at the end of the day, which is, is helpful. Mm. And this is one of the nicer rinks in the, in the, in the area. It could, there use, plenty. It, it could use some upgrade. The one thing that we've always been asking for is, you know, just to give us a locker room or a place to put our stuff that we could secure it. And that's been a little bit of a sticky subject. Um, no, because honestly, there's been times where locker rooms have been broken into. Kids have had some of their things stolen. Mm. And, um, but other than that, other than those couple of things, you know, they, we have a good working relationship. Oh, Spano it was laying on the doorstep. He didn't see it. Fortunately, a defender, I cannot name a name, but pulled it out of the depths of despair. But just how much ice time is that was probably one of the biggest eye openers when i oh when the I, actual when cost I, when i came <laughs> when i came to this job i was like we're paying how much yeah i mean it's it's crazy well what are they what, what now you're banging it out i don't know if you're banging it out like the winter time but during off seasons they oh, probably do pretty health well oh they i'm telling the you leagues? This, this place is packed all the time Come on, there's a break. Put it on net. Shoot it. Oh, it's oh. a good try. try. Oh, why? Oh, why? Oh, early, see? And early now we call. have a little bit of a quick whistle. He there was a loose he, puck. He didn't have control of that. No. There was a loose puck. They missed it. We move on. Yeah, I think he got blocked. He was from behind the net. It happens. It happens, yep. Nifty move, but Brockton is hanging tough. I'll tell you what's a real nice facility, and I know, Mike, I'm sorry you're going to hear me repeat myself again, but that Canton Ice House is. Oh, it's, it's incredible. It, it's so good. And the one down in Falmouth, not the Gala, but there's a new one down in Falmouth that's fantastic, the Bog down in Kingston. So what I mean by just updating. Yeah. Um, it, it would be nice to have the high ceilings, to have the stands up high with the restaurant or a, a place for, for people to go where it wasn't cold. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. 
Yeah, you see a lot of places. Oh, doing here we go. Oh, good oh! glove save. That's a real good glove oh, save because he Spano had that. made that one look easy. He had and it was that not. whole right side of the net open. And what a snag. Yeah, that was quite a quite a snipe. We are at five and a half minutes left in the period. And I think one Ryan, goal on I the think board, Ryan is a catcher on the baseball team. I'm going to have to double check on that. But he would be a fantastic catcher. Keeps everything in front of him. Yeah. Quick hands. Yeah, he's quick. Efficient with his movement. Oh, oh. Oh, and there he oh, was. Oh, again. Great body position. Great yeah, save. Yeah, just everything right in front of him. Yeah. He let the technique do all the work and then just took care of it. Ooh. Ooh. It was tipped by a Brockton player. It was. <laughs> that was. That was tricky. That was dangerous. Did we get away with it? Uh, Nadek very good at keeping it in the zone. Oh, that should uh, that's going to yeah. be a trip. That should is be. a trip. Yeah. And they're calling it. And here we go with 4:41 left in the second period. No TV timeouts today, postman. Not no TV Do timeouts. We have an official sponsor for today's game. Uh, it's sponsored in part by postman Mike Simmons, Kevin Cairo. And Jay Miller. <laughs> I got to say, one thing that I'm surprised that they don't have here is advertising on the boards. Everywhere you go. I mean, it, there's advertising everywhere. That is true. They are a little light. Maybe that's I mean, part of the really, master I mean, plan. There's very little advertising here. How high is the ceiling? Uh, I'm going to say 20 feet. 20 feet. Oh, look out. We have another penalty coming up, I believe, on Brockton. Now this is going to be a big penalty kill. They got an ice that's great. And we have a high stick. High stick. Oh, boy, that's two men in the box. On Peter Sylvia. So we have two men in the box. Oh, it's five on three. Five on three that's here. That's no bueno. That is not good. So they'll be on the two-man advantage for 129. And then all things being oh. hopeful and good, save Spano. Uh, that penalty will wrap up, and they'll have another 31 seconds on the man advantage. Uh-oh. Is he okay? That is. He just got drilled in the chest. Spano is down, but he's yeah. okay. He's on one knee. They're checking to see if he's all right. He oh. Might have got it in the bread basket. <laughs> got it right in the chest. Yeah. I don't and care how much padding you put. Puck that's coming in at 70 miles an hour is going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to hurt. And he felt it, but look at him right back up, ready to go. <sighs> ah, to be young and tough. Puck goes out of play. It was tipped. Yeah, I don't know when all of a sudden you decide in youth hockey, I want to be a goalie and stop things coming really fast that really could hurt me. That's what I want to do. You know, you know I, uh, yeah, I had some friends that played goaltender, and uh, none of them were right in the head. Oh, my nephew. None I mean, he is, he's diehard. He's 11 years old, and he, he loves it. He loves it. And they it. just had him play with the 15 and, 15 and under team over in Hingham. Wow. And, uh, Good for oh, him. he's just fearless. How, he's, how old is he now? 11. He's, he's playing 15 he's, and under? Good yeah, for him. Yeah, he's playing 15 and under. He well, goes is he a big hoss like you? Or? Oh, he's a big you know, kid. A brick house? Big kid. <laughs> does he get the height? For his age, he does. Yeah. All right, we're still in that five on three. This is a critical juncture in the game. Yeah. Come on. Brockton's packed it in. All right. A little pressure. Sylvia gambling a little oh. bit. Gamble wins. All right. Throws it in. All right. Kill some time. Put a shot on net. You never know. I always say. Can't score. You miss 100% of shoot. the shots you don't take, right? <laughs> That's right. So uh, who did you say this was? The 11 year old? Is that your nephew? Or? That's my nephew, yeah. All right. So, so he's, oh, that he's not be right a penalty. Ahead. Here we go. So... 
That'll wipe out. Uh, so much we said two whistles in the first period. We've had three stoppage of plays in the last hmm. two minutes. Yeah, it's the quarter. What? Did I say that all loud? So we are even at four on four. In 12 seconds. 12 seconds. Right, we're still four at Four on three right now. Four on three, and then four on four in 12. And then they'll be even for... That's the one thing I love about the NHL, where they went to that three on three format in overtime. It is oh, yeah. so much fun. It's fun. It is fun. It's fun. It's fast. It's wide open. Right. Ooh. I think I, I think he got a piece of that one, too. I yeah, think Spano did. did get a piece. As the penalty time on the first one is up. So and the they are skating on a power four. play for a minute and 15. Not bad, not bad. Did an excellent job on the five on three. Wasn't too long, but long enough to kill it. And then they, uh, they took a penalty of their own against, uh, against Natick, so. Puck is down in Brockton's end. Let's see if they can gather the puck, maintain possession, and move it forward. And now they are on the power play. We have just over a minute left in the power play. Let's see what Brockton can do with this. Jalen Bridges. Oh, oh over to Martin. That's He's been there. He's due. He's due, Kevin. Need a little lucky break there. He is don't due get today. Three guys, don't get three guys all together, though. That can be a recipe for disaster. Good job by Sylvia. Oh, come on. Ah, good try. Just a little too far El out. El Shammy. It's knocked off the puck. Oh. That's over to Martin. Martin has been sniffing that goal all game. Back to El Shammy. Oh. Shot by Sylvia wide. Ugh. Martin keeps the puck one. in. Yeah, that was a blister shot. Oh, Ooh, another one. Oh, oh. come up. Oh, a good to. Oh, oh it's in yeah. There the All right. Nathan L. Shammy with the goal. 52 a, seconds left. Yeah, that's the a power great play. goal. Wow. Goal is in, that's and we a, are tied at 1 1. That's all American right there. That is great hustle. The puck was laying there. He was in the right spot. Good positioning. Finished it off. Well done. Nicely done. Now, this is where they cannot, and this is where it's happened so many times, yes. where they work so hard and they get careless. Yeah, it happened the last game. It, 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 was, home, it, it, was, it was It was like, I think, six seconds. Yes. Let's so see if they stay They've worked, stay they've worked so hard. So they just need to get through the period here. And what about the boys' basketball team yesterday afternoon? Oh, you want to talk about heartbreak. <laughs> Three-pointer with no time left. It went in with 0.5 seconds, I believe. After it hit the rim, bounced up, I'm like, no, no, it's not going to go. <laughs> and then it went in. But, man, that kid... From Wachusett, he was something else. Oh, no. Oh, good defense. That was excellent defense by Birmingham. Getting underneath the Natick stick, which was sure to be a goal. He was camped out on the side of the net. Excellent oh. job by Birmingham. Uh, we hit the Offsides. twilight zone over there. Many slips and falls in that, in that uh, where the blue lines are. Center rice. But, uh, you know, that's hockey. Mike, how many do you think that kid last night had from what you said? He had to be close to 30. I mean, Postman agrees. He had 30 points. Yeah, what did they score? I, I would say I mean, he, just, he just shot threes and very rarely missed. Wow, well, watch you sit. 
but better yet, we are at AZF Rink here with Kevin Cairo, who has been excellent through two periods, as have the Brockton Boxers. And like it or not, you're with me period three, too. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Time to change the channel. Or Time stay to tuned. change the channel, go out, run some errands, do some laundry. But not after you return after these important messages. <laughs> oh no, what happened? Dave. Oh, I got this. Hey, Carol. Dad. Let's, let's take off his sweatshirt. Get rid of pictures of him. We don't have to look at him. Goodbye, Dave. I want you to understand he's tagged in like 400 of my posts. Well, I can cut out tags. No, that's, that's not how it works. What is a tag? <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care would love to share their first with you. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Let's crawl. Welcome back to third period action. This is BCA Sports. I'm Jay Miller along with oh. color commentary provided today by none other than athletic director Kevin Cairo. Kevin, we are 1-1 one, one through one, two one periods. 1-1 after two. We've got a great game. Nada coming in, uh, competing with the, the heaviest of the heavy hitters in Division One, and Brockton is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them today. It's been quite impressive. And this is what we talked about earlier in the broadcast. Here it is, the third period. <coughs> Excuse me. He set it up nicely for us, the third period. Yeah, the, the third period, go. and we just got to see if they, can man if they can maintain their intensity and keep putting their bodies on other people and keeping the tempo up pace. They've got a very good chance to pull a big upset here at home. Yeah, and, you know, one of the other things we talked about, too, it's vacation week, and mm -hmm. you just never know. You know, they're human beings. They're students. Uh, they've worked. Uh, well, you get a nice break in December, but then you, you're back in February. Uh, but it's nice to have a break, and when you have a break, you can let up. Yeah, I mean, and it's a, I think people forget uh, what a long day it can be for a student athlete. I mean, if you're up at 6 to catch the bus or you have to be in school by 7.20 and then you're in class all day and then you have your game at 5.30, 6 o'clock at night, I mean, that's 12 hours yeah, at least. that you're up yeah. and about. You don't have a place to, to go home and take a nap a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And it's just a long, long day. Yeah. I even said it in football. Friday nights is, is you know, good in theory. Uh, you know, Friday night lights, but man, what an awful long day for the oh, kids and the coaches. Goodness. Yeah. What time do they? What time do the football players report back? They usually get there. You know, anywhere from four to four thirty. So they enough time around. to get home, fuel up, but maybe lot, a little bit. A lot of them live so far away. Uh, it, it's tough for them to get home. So a lot of them will go, unfortunately, over to Burger King and McDonald's and load up with the junk food. That's why we've been getting them lunches. Um, over at the stadium so they don't have to go over there. So we, mm -hmm. Chot Wells has, so, has been great with us to get them some, some healthier alternatives. But man, oh, really? They worked with you? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Now, Chot Wells is uh, lights out. They do a great job. They're everywhere. Oh, they're, they're fantastic. They are High. so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're a go-to for a lot of places. Uh, a lot of the events that we cover, we see Chot Wells as the, uh, as the caterer. Oh, we have potential here with Masaro. Oh, oh. there should be no, just couldn't no get to interference. It for good I was hoping for an interference. It was borderline. 
Oh, oh, good hit. Ooh, good oh, good block. Oh, a nice block. That's got to hurt. <laughs> yeah, Shane Machine is feeling that one. <laughs> That's good. Ooh, but look I've, at him right back out there. I felt that. No time off. The bench is full. Sorry, oh, Seamus. That should have been a trip. We got away with one. Yeah, it'll be interesting how this uh, period's called. First period, they didn't, didn't blow the whistle. And the second period, oh. uh, it's a completely different game. Oh, what do we got? A little boarding going on? Yeah, I think. We got, I think we got and boarding. And it looks we have a power play for Brockton. Got to say, it's a little weird without any music blasting. Yes, <laughs> yes, we enjoy the music. So a big penalty to here to start the third period. We're almost two and a half minutes in, and Brockton is going on the power play. This is a big one. Now, Kevin, the face-off. Mm-hmm. Some of these referees come in, they just drop the puck. <laughs> and then others, you've got others that want to make, it, make it all about them. <laughs> and then there's everybody else. Uh, oh, what is your understanding of what the what is actually being said? I think what they take a look at is to make sure that whoever's in the circle isn't trying to get an advantage as far as their positioning, where their feet is, and how far into the circle they are. They just want to make sure that everybody's kind of... Where they're supposed where to they're be. Where they're supposed to be with mm. nobody's getting an, an advantage. And, ah. I mean, there's, there's some guys that do it so well. But if you just go in and drop the puck instead of waiting, of course you're going to anticipate. Just go in and throw it down. Throw it down. <clears throat> just throw it down. And this is why we enjoy this referee for the most part. Yeah. There we go. But, I mean, it, dri it, up, it, it drives me nuts when I watch the Bruins. Oh! That kick save. Referee, uh, no, change out, change out. Yeah, you out. see it in the Just pros all the time. Just drop the puck. Nobody came to watch you drop the puck. Right. And they have more referees on the ice now. Oh, they got more than ever. Mm -hmm. And they still miss so many calls. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia kicks it back to El Shami, who the official confirmation is that Peyton Sylvia scored, but um, we have it through excellent camera review. Thanks to Mike Simmons, the postman. Uh, it looked as if El Shami stuck that from the corner into the net. Oh, come on, ben boys. Martin. They're a little, they're not as aggressive here on the power play. Nope. They got to get it set up. Here we go. Out in front, Shami. Oh. oh. Didn't Shami have enough juice two. on it. Didn't have enough juice. Oh, oh that's a nice puck. Over to Bridges. Bridges back in. Oh, oh good and save. Gloved. Good rush by Bridges. Well done. He's had a heck of a year. Well, the one time that I wish we could have used instant review or instant replay was in the Thanksgiving Day football game. I have never been so upset. Uh, I was up in the booth. And um, we got called for offensive pass interference, and it was, it, I mean, it r ruined a 60-yard play that we had. And it was so blatant that the, the kid from the other team just tripped and fell. And the referee from the, across the field threw the flag on us. Yeah, we were, we were oh. covering the game. We were as surprised as you were. And I remember I even said, I said, can you replay that? And Steve Burton was up in the booth, and he's like, Kev, the kid fell. <laughs> yeah. Um, but all good things come to those it, who yep. wait. And you didn't have to I, wait long for another big well, play. I think we got 15 yards. I think we ended up with two 15-yard <laughs> penalties. So instead of picking up 60 yards on the play, we went to first and 40. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you were way back at your end. And first like, and 40. Oh. I don't think I've ever seen first and 40 before. <laughs> yeah, that could have. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to let it go. I was going to say something. But, uh, yeah, hey, you guys you guys hey, came away with it. We ended up winning in the yeah. end. And all things. No rear view mirror. Yeah, all good things. Yeah, I mean, it was really incredible. It was an incredible call. Uh, what else can you say? And that could be an icing. Should it be. is. It is. All right, we have 10 minutes left, and this 
shaping up to be an instant classic. 1-1, one, one, knockdown drag him out here at AZF Arena on AZF Rink. Yeah, we've got the rank. Golden Knights jerseys versus the Montreal Canadiens jerseys. That's what we got going Ooh, on Oh, I like here. that, I like yeah. that, yeah. I yeah, like the these. Knights? I like I like these unis a lot. Yeah, you guys did a nice job picking them out. Now, what was that? Was that Coach Cunningham and you? Uh, Chris and I helped design them. So he had something in mind. So I went to um, the design team from the company we bought them with. They gave us some renderings. And we tweaked it a little bit, and this is what we have. And the best thing about it is you flip it over, and it's the away jersey, mm -hmm. which is really nice, reversible. So we're not collecting two sets of uniforms and. No, who's a, who's the team manager here? The team manager is um, myself and Mrs. Savas. We're in charge of <laughs> getting So you guys washing clothes and everything? Oh, <laughs> like I say, five years to get my bachelor's degree, five <laughs> years to get a master's degree, <laughs> hundreds of hours of professional development, and I do laundry with the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> do you tell your wife at home? Hey, oh, I do my I, laundry. I. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. All right. I do the laundry in the house. I do the grocery shopping in the house. We split the cooking. All right, all right. Not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty even with you. The cooking I might do a little bit more of just because of our schedules. Oh, oh, oh. oh and Spano stretched for that one. It went wide. And we've got a classic here. This one is bodies flying. We got the puck. Every possession is critical at this point. Sheehan gets it out. Bridges up. Needs some support. This is the line. Pollyon Murrow. Oh, didn't have enough juice on it. <coughs> to get a three on two. On two. Oh, oh good nice block. block. Great block. El Shami coming into the fold. The puck is loose. Brockton has it. Palermo clears it out. Back to Sheehan. Sheehan gets some quality ice time here. Massaro. All right, come on. Take a little Over push. to Sylvia. Sylvia on the rush. Oh, Ooh. that's a great shot. Tried going top shelf. Great shot, Good but stop. goalie had great position. Oh, oh, oh just run right the tip. out in front that way wide. Another one. Oh. The puck's still loose. Oh, he's got to cover it up. Oh, boy, good pressure right there. They let him play on that one, Kevin. No. More quick with the whistle, which is great. Wow, what activity back and forth. This is incredible. 8.14 left in the third period. Now, for our viewers out there, Kevin, they play three periods and that's it? That's it. Yep. It's the wise, the wisest decision. I'd love, Regular to, see, season. I'd love to see a shootout. <laughs> well, you know, you never know. Maybe one day. <laughs> oh, look oh, out. Oh, Masara walked into that one. But he's not That's okay. afraid to he's walk right into up. the hornet's nest. Slightly larger defender <laughs> that he ran into. <laughs> Who's just simply flying up the ice. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. That's why you have your stick on the ground. On the ice, in this case, Postman. Right. Come on, boys. Nobody All home, right, nobody fortunately. Home. So Brockton will be able to reset. Kevin, this is where you They're might want to try. Lines and here yeah, we go. you might want to keep changing lines from quicker. Now it's the last, first line change in over a minute. I'm not sure what Coach Cunningham's plan is moving forward, but. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a timeout probably at the five minute mark just to kind of have everybody catch their breath. Yeah, and then bring out the guns. Yep. All right, Bridges takes the face off. Puck is dropped. Birmingham has it. Clears it around the puck, around the zone. Oh, don't, don't. Oh, look Ooh, out. Somebody went down. Oh. Oh! Number 18 is down. I don't know Number what happened. Number 18 took a, he... took a hit. It looked like he took a hit. Oh. It was strong enough to get back to the ice, uh, back to the back to the bench. Puck is cleared out. Sylvia patient. Ooh, just get shot blocked. El Shami has it, keeps it in. 
as El Shami has the only Brockton oh, that goal be a today. Trip. Oh no! And oh, a penalty boy. will be called. And they just need to touch this puck. Touch it. There we there go. There you go. Oh. All right. So here's a good question for you that's going to open up some debate. Pound for pound, who are the toughest athletes? Is it hockey players, football players, wrestlers? I, 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 I've always uh, believed that hockey, um, just all that they have to do, all they're required to do, um, they are still, even though it's rare, um, have the ability to fight. That's the only sport that they're allowed to fight. And you just take it, your, your, your body's getting knocked around. Baseball is underrated for toughness. I think people scoff at, oh, he's got a sore shoulder or well, that's a grind, man. Being a former baseball player, I wouldn't consider us athletes. <laughs> you know what? They become more athletic. It's yeah. a, when, back in the days of Terry Forster or few and far between. Oh, oh. he went top shelf. And never he walked saw right it. in. Never he saw walked. it. No, never saw it. Walked right in. There was a decent screen out front. Yeah, that went right over his top shoulder. He certainly did. Oh, I would. Are you kidding me? It appears yeah, he's that, been. That was, that was a taunting right there. He should be in the box. In my opinion. If he's taunting, that, that is that a penalty. That should be a penalty. Coach Cunningham, not too happy. No. Where were you? Goal by Andrew Kittler to put Nadick up two to one with five and a half left in the game. Well, we've got a bond burner here, folks. Plenty of time left, just under five and a half minutes. Natick, Red Hawks have just gone up 2-1 over your Brockton Boxers. The Boxers have played a heck of a game. Uh, this team, Natick, is very tough. Should fare, depending on seeding, fare well in the tournament. You could easily see this team winning at least a couple of games in the MIAA tournament. And Brockton has hung right with them. The tough goal, uh, the last goal by Natick, a tough one. Spano was shielded, screened, and just simply didn't see the buck go over his shoulder. It was too little, too late. He's had a heck of a game, as have many boxers today. Let's see if they can tie this one back up. It would be a huge, huge tie. And ties aren't usually another save by Spano, by the way. He's Brockton's defense has been pretty good. I don't know, Postman, do we think we have, have hit 50? No. We're looking like we're approaching 40. And we've had a uh, silent statistician keeping track since the first period. He'll remain silent. Kevin Cairo had to step away from the announcer's booth to deal with an important issue. Oh. oh, oh! went high on Spano. We are approaching four minutes left in the match. Oh, nice save, Spano. Steals that one away. And this is where you're starting to see a little bit of the fatigue set. Yes, in. yes. I can we'll see where Natick is really putting the pedal to the metal here. Great. Nice save by Spano. And we're just kind of getting pushed around. This is the point. This is the point. They get to reach deep. Birmingham has or loses it. Stays with it. Oh. Peter Sylvia joins the party. Oh. And an ice. 
All right, we headed down to the Natick end of the end of ice. 337. We'll be interested to see here if Coach Cunningham has any thoughts on a timeout. I think if anything, he may call a timeout with minute 30. Talk about pulling the goalie, setting up the six on five, hopefully. Oh, here, nope. He there must you have go. Us. <laughs> hey, you speculated. You win. You had the times. You had five and then somewhere in a minute and a half range. So you're about right. Cut it, you know, cut it in half, divide by two. There you go. I guess. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, pulling the goalie, it was interesting. They were down two goals the other day, and he kept the goalie in, then eventually pulled him. Uh, but it's such a it's such a tough call. Yeah, I mean it really is because it's if a, you score, it, you look like a hero, and if you give up a goal, you're like, what what are the heck you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Risk for reward. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can't catch up without uh, without scoring. So little little too early for that. And uh, now this break is. I guess tactics, but at the same time, giving them a quick rest, like you were saying. So uh, the announcement for the Brockton High School Hall of Fame, when does that normally come out? I think letters went out to everyone who was selected this year. And I think the official announcement will come after Monday. We have a meeting, Hall of Fame meeting on Monday, just to kind of finalize everything. Mm -hmm. And when is that? When does that banquet taste play, April take place? April twenty eighth, I think April twenty eighth. And how do they find out more about it? Um, well, they meaning the community. For the community, well, I'm sure that we'll post something in the paper. Um, I'll put something on our Facebook page for sure. And, and then, are you uh, getting any? Um, you get any uh, involvement with uh, the? Seems to be. New and improved alumni association. Yeah, and we'll spread it through through that uh, the gentleman who runs that. Yeah, Bob Saltzman. Yep. yep. Ooh. Oh, oh, we tip. just got a piece of that. Did just get a piece of that. And we are down to almost three minutes left in the game. Birmingham playing hard all the way through. Mm -hmm. and we've got the face off outside the Brockton zone, which is big. So three minutes left, third period, 2-1 Natick Redhawks over your Brockton Boxers. It's been a heck of a game today. Oh, it's been a great game. Mm. And that first period, I think Ryan probably saw 20, at least 20 shots. We were talking about it earlier. <laughs> we, we, we thought it was about 20. You're right. Yeah, it was a barrage. And unfortunately, the last goal, you know, leading to your uh, your observation that their legs get a little heavier, mm -hmm. as we see right now. Uh, the, the, the puck handler walked right to the net. Yeah. And he, they would, there happened to be a, a screen they, in front, but they need to he just, just was allowed the body, to just... They, yeah. They haven't been putting the body on. It just looks like they're getting they're just a little tired, but this we're going to have to dig down deep the last two minutes here. Let's see what they're made of. And, no, and the other thing is they just can't get careless with penalties. They can't. Oh, they can't afford a penalty now or it's, no. it's all but over. No. Got to get the puck out of the net, and then, yeah. then, then, the coach, uh, then coach Campbell can decide what he wants to do. We got a delay off sides. Here we go. If they can push, push the puck up, oh, that's what you don't need. Now, are you calling the game here on um, Thursday afternoon? Yes, we'll be here. All right. This will be, be the final too. home It'll game. It will be the right? final yeah. home game. All right. And I believe it's against Walpole. You're right. It is against Walpole. And How do they look? One thing that I remember past couple years that I've known Walpole does the most amazing job using the boards to move the puck better than any team that I've seen really and I okay. talked to the coach about it a couple of years and he said that's like 10 minutes of their practice is just using the boards and just feeding one another and this point in the year wait until you see all right that's we're looking gonna, forward to be, that that'll be my pregame prediction for Thursday that the, the Walpole team will use the boards about as effectively as any team that you'll see. 
Oh, all right. That's um. You don't normally hear that. No, and it's not just that it's not a part of the game. You know, they talk about being strong, being physical, and mm -hmm. but just you, being able to use maneuver the, boards the puck up there. Yeah, maneuver the puck using and the boards. know where to be, anticipate where the puck's gonna go. I mean, it's well, that'll be a one to look forward to. We have one minute left in this one, and oh, Brockton is in on trouble. One. Oh, Ooh, wide! Nice shot, but it's wide. Yeah. Uh, he cut down his angle, which was good. It really didn't give him much to shoot at. And Coach Campbell has decided oh, not. Oh, come on. Offside. That should be offside. Yep. And he thinks that this is the time now to well, pull Campbell if he's going to do it. I think Because we're outside the zone. Outside the zone. Maybe he could get halfway out there. I don't know. They've got to win the face off, dump the puck down, and then I think you've got to pull him. Timeout called call by time Natick. Yep. So uh, spring sports, what are we? What are you looking forward to? What are the, some of the teams on the rise or well, um, individuals? You know, baseball had a great season last year. They finished 15 and five. They graduated some some kids, but they have a really good core nucleus coming back. So I think they'll be they'll be very competitive. Um, I'm excited for softball. This is the second year under with Katie Balboni as our coach and. She had a lot of young kids last year, and they're coming back. And um, so I think they'll be better than they have been. Good. Tra boys and girls track is always mm, really always good. Solid. Yeah. Always strong. You'd see, it um, always seems like you have somebody, uh, at least a one or two individuals, batting for a, uh, battling oh, for a state I mean, title. Just what they're coming off of for the indoor season. We have um, one of our relay teams that just – qualified to go down to the armory in new york for the new balance invitational in the first weekend in march wow uh, and that's the four by 200 four by 400 i mean these kids are unbelievable <laughs> wow did you ever run track did i run track no i was a baseball guy at basketball and baseball in high basketball school basketball and baseball yeah all right i did track for uh one year but it was all flat surface and we went to Reggie Lewis had just opened up the yep. Reggie Lewis Center. And, uh, yeah, that was a trip. Quite enjoyable. We thought we were good. And then we went to a state meet. Here he comes. And we were and there's your extra skater. mediocre. Yeah. What do we got? Somebody maybe down on the ice. Please oh, they were tangled no, up. No penalty? No penalty, but we do have a stoppage in play. Uh -oh. And they're no, moving they it. we do have a penalty. Out. Oh no. Okay. Here we go. See that Nathan don't. Oh, the two of them are they going out? What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> no foolish yeah. penalties. Yeah. You called. And it. I know you're getting beat. You're getting beat two to one, and you know your emotion, but you can't. You just have to be a little more disciplined than that, especially coming from a senior. Nathan, I'm very surprised by that. One, two, three, four. I don't know what happened there, but it's six on five instead of five on four. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they just... Uh, oh, oh, what a goal! With 12.8 seconds left. With 12.8 seconds left. Wow. Brockton scores. Wow. Unbelievable. And it looks like it was Ben Martin. Justice has been served. He was all around the net all day long. Yeah. Finally, his hard work paid off with a goal. The game is tied. Two to two. I don't believe it. What a great effort by the wow. boxers. Great pressure. They knew what time they well, had. <laughs> Let's make sure. And we have 12.8 <laughs> seconds have, left. <laughs> could be the longest 12.8 seconds of the, of the week right here. Oh, well, you got to hustle for that. And there's using the boards. Ooh. And that was a screamer. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Spano and the Brockton Ooh. Boxers. That's a big tie. You got to almost treat that as a win. I, I'm telling you, 
when you look back on this season, this might be their best game. Wow. They went toe-to-toe. Toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and Ryan the, Spano had an unbelievable game, and they came Obviously, up and, the number one star. All right, this is where I just got to go and watch the handshake to make sure we don't have any business, but thanks, brother. Kevin Carroll, a always a pleasure. We'll and see I you will next see you time. on Thursday. Walpole, baby, Walpole. Wow. Oh, Kevin Carroll first. Wow. Second, what a finish. This is the best game of the year that we have covered. Postman, would you agree? He does, as they do, through the, go through the handshake line. Kevin K. Rowe down there just to make sure everybody's peaceful and happy. So there you have it. This game is in the books. The final score, your Brockton Boxers with 12.8 seconds left. Tie up the Natick Skyhawks with the final score. And we're just getting word that they needed this two points in order to go to the tournament. Natick Riverhawks will not be going, and through the offseason, they'll have Brockton to thank for it. What a game. What two solid hockey teams going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There's nothing better. So, for today's broadcast partner, Kevin Cairo, Athletic Director of Boston of Brockton High School Athletics. I'm Jay Miller. Of course, the person that makes it all happen, the producer, the cameraman, the legend, Postman Mike Simmons. For all of us here, we'll see you next time.